let's uh, use some basic trigonometry to figure out how tall this building is. So the situation is we have this building and 500 feet away from the base of the building, uh, let's say you're on the ground, you had some sort of optical instrument and you measure the angle from here all the way up to the height of the building and that's 20 degrees, okay? So that's a measurement from, uh, right here. Again, it's 500 feet away from the base of the building and we kind of have to assume the building is a uh, right angle. It's forming a 90 degrees. It's not like the Leaning Tower of Pizza or did I say that right? I probably said that wrong. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. It's not going this way. <laughs> uh, so it's a right angle and we have 500 feet this way, okay, from the base all the way out where we took this measurement and the measurement's 20 degrees. We know this is 500 feet. So could we find the height of this building? Absolutely. Uh, we got enough data, but we need now knowledge of trigonometry, some basic trigonometry. And of course, a handy uh, calculator will uh, help us out as well. Um, now, uh, back in the good old days when you didn't have a calculator, calculators have been around for uh, many, many years, and then their you know, computers have been around for even longer. But when people um, had to calculate these things, let's say like a high school student or a college student, when they were doing trigonometry, uh, to find out you know, what we uh, do on our calculator when we're doing messing around with angles, you had to look in the back of a book. Now, some books, I don't see them around anymore, but old math books in the back, you'd have tables you know, with sine, tangent, co, uh, cosine, et cetera. You look things up, um, and I remember learning math in that way. And then you had these things called slide rules, which were absolutely amazing. They're like little rulers, and you slide this thing around, and you'd actually be able to do a lot of calculations on this. And this is the way people would uh, do math. You know, I would say, oh, let's say 50, 40, 50 years uh, ago from the time of this video, you know, people were using slide rules, definitely like in the uh, late 60s, early uh, 70s, and then calculators came along and replaced that, just, just so you can kind of have a little history lesson about this stuff. But uh, nevertheless, um, we need to use our calculator, and I'll show you what we need to do here with that calculator in just one second. Okay, now, if you think you could figure this problem out and you want to test your basic trigonometry uh, knowledge, then I definitely encourage you to do so. But I'm going to show you how to do this step by step in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's get into this problem, basic trigonometry, and here we go. All right, so how tall is a building? Now, this is a pretty practical application of trigonometry because imagine, you know, if you're up here, how could we measure this building? Well, it's not like you're going to go up with a tape measure. You stand on top of the building, and you're like dangle down maybe a string. You could do it that way, right? like a little rope or something, and then you go down uh, on the ground and you're going to measure out this little rope. Now, if you, in a practical sense, yes, you know, you could do that, but let's suppose this thing is like so, so high, you know, just use your imagination. This is like, you know, and it's also pretty dangerous, right? So we want to use math to help us out here. So to figure out the height of this building, well, if we have data like this, and this isn't the only information that we could have, we could have this angle, um, and we could have this length here, but that's obviously, we're not going to be able to have this length from here to here. Okay. How would we practically be able to get that? Obviously I can measure this out safely on the ground and get this angle. So this little thing right here, this reminds me when I was in the Marine Corps, we had this thing called the slide for life. And we would kind of like slide down this little thing like this. And, uh, of course, the drill instructors would be screaming at you, then you just fall down into the water. But that's another story. I digress. Those are good old memories in my uh, past. But uh, anyways, continue uh, on. Okay, we have this angle here. We have this length. We can definitely uh, figure this thing out. So what you want to do is distill down this little situation into a triangle, because this is what we're dealing with. Okay, so let's uh, make a little uh, model here. So effectively what we have is this. We're trying to find the height of the building. That's this side of the triangle. This length is 500 feet. We'll just call it 500 for now. And this angle here is 20 degrees, and that is a right triangle, okay? All right, so we're talking about basic right, uh, uh, right 
triangle trigonometry. And uh, when you're talking about basic right triangle trigonometry, you're dealing with these functions, these trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so we need to pick the right uh, one that we want to use here. Now, which one do I want to use? Well, I have this. I'm looking for this here. I'm interested in this side of the triangle. And I have this piece right here, and this is my angle. So this SOKATOA, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you should be, SOKATOA. This is sine. The sine of an angle is equal uh, to its opposite over our hypotenuse. The cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now in this triangle, let me just draw a little triangle right here. If this is my angle, 20 degrees, uh, the longest side of a right triangle is always the hypotenuse, okay? That's always H, okay? So I don't have H here. Uh, now, uh, looking at this 20 degrees, the side that's adjacent to it, that's next to, would be this. That's the adjacent side. And then the side that's opposite is obviously the opposite side, okay? So in this situation, when I'm looking at this 20 degrees, I have the adjacent and I, I'm interested in the opposite. So I want to pick the trigonometric function that has both the uh, adjacent and opposite, and, and I'm sorry, the opposite and the adjacent, and that would be tangent, okay? So we're going to use the tangent here because if I have, if I use the cosine, um, I need this length, I need, and both for sine and uh, cosine, I need the hypotenuse, and I don't have that, okay? I don't have this length. And I'm interest, interested in this, so we're going to use the tangent. But sometimes you have this other information, and you'll have to use a sine or a cosine. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. We're going to use the tangent because it involves both the opposite and the adjacent uh, with respect to this particular um, angle in this triangle. Okay? All right, so if you understand that, now we can uh, kind of pull this all together. All right, so here's the work. Again, we're thinking TOA, SOCA, TOA, TOA. So tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's what that stands for, this little TOA. It's a little uh, deal. So the tangent of 20 degrees, okay, is equal to its opposite side. In this case, it's X, okay? This is the opposite over the adjacent, and the adjacent side is 500, okay? So this is, by definition, the opposite over the adjacent. So tangent of 20 degrees is opposite over adjacent, or here, x over 500. So you got to understand this setup here, all right? Now at this point, this is effectively just a basic proportion. Let's just put this over one. So I can solve for x by just cross multiplying, okay? If you're confused about proportions, um, solving proportions, I have tons of videos in my algebra channel. But all we need to do is take 500, multiply it by tangent of 20 degrees, and that's what I have right here. 500 times tangent to 20 degrees, and 1 times x is x. So x is going to be equal to 500 times tangent of 20 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, okay? And uh, when you do that, you'll get x is approximately equal to 181.9, okay? So that's what x is equal to, but what does that represent? Well, x was the height of the building. So the building is 181.9 feet approximately. There's a few other decimals we can kind of round up. And that's it. Okay, so this is an illustration of basic trigonometry, basic right angle trigonometry. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously when you're learning a topic or a subject like trigonometry, we have to start off with the basics. Okay, and this is kind of the basics, but we get an appreciation of, um, you know, the power of trigonometry. It's it's so powerful, okay? And, and today, when you study trigonometry, typically you start studying it within a geometry course, okay? Like in my geometry course, I teach you basic right angle trigonometry, but in my pre-calculus course, uh, I teach you advanced trigonometry. All right, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, if you're like, okay, this was helpful, please consider smashing the like button and if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. Been on YouTube for over 10 years, I have over a thousand videos, basic to advance on my channel, all there for you. My passion is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have tons of videos there for you, and I'm posting new content like every week. Okay, but my best math help for sure will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. 
Thank you for your time and have a great day.